Malik Beasley had 10. And we are nine minutes into the game. Here's Emmanuel Terry. He lit up tonight with some major highlights yesterday. Lost the handlings in Phoenix in terms of establishing what type of players they want to have there, not just in terms of talent, but the type of people, the type of men, you know, integrity, approach to the game. And uh, this guy right here, it starts and ends with him there in Phoenix. And uh, happy for Devin and, and his family, like you said, Rick. And you see the improvement year by year. And last year, 24.9 PPG took over 19 shots. Youngest player ever to top 70 points in the NBA. He did that against the Celtics a couple of years ago. But in, in this league, you need shooting. It's the most important skill in the NBA, and he's one of the best shooters in the NBA. And last year, with all the issues they had at point guard, I saw Devin Booker, you know, with, with the ball more and yes. making plays and, and more of a setup guy. And his game really expanded, not unlike Bradley Beal University next year. Nice. But Devin's a good young man, uh, which makes me really happy for him to get uh, the contract and the recognition that he so well deserves. Congratulations to Devin Booker and his family. That is huge. So, uh, hard question alert. I want you to answer that question as Akun Purcell misses the three. Ten years from now, we're looking back at the 2018 draft uh, with some revisionist out for in the West. So I had a uh, I had an interesting conversation with uh, on on a on a on a draft show with Greg Anthony and Isaiah Thomas. Number eight, Peter Cornelius. And this was on the air. This, these aren't secrets. This was on NBA TV. I asked uh, both of those great gentlemen, mm -hmm. 10 years from now, who's the best player in the 2018 draft? Okay. Isaiah Thomas said Jaron Jackson Jr. And after the game we just watched, <laughs> that doesn't seem like such a reach. Greg Anthony said Michael Porter Jr. I mean, it's, we'll see, you know? Uh, I think that it's, it's quick for us to try and define who's the best player at something and they haven't really played, I mean, Jaron Jackson Jr. has played two games and, you know, maybe three in, in the summer. Michael Porter Jr. hasn't played yet at all. Greg Anthony has a good perspective because his son is an up-and-coming young talent. Cole Anthony. At the, at the high school level team already. Bring him along slowly and allow him to start to, you know, slowly infuse himself into what is turning into last night. Coming back tonight, still high energy, high intensity from multiple guys. Um, you know, Coach Jordy Fernandez, he looks like he's a passionate. It just seems like there's always at least one Kentucky guy, and that's a huge credit to uh, John Calipari as Okun Purcell missed, but through that activity got it back in dime to Manuel Terry. Both of those guys summer really hang out like college guys, get to know one another, you know, understand who you're playing with, really like each other and enjoy playing together that, that ultimately leads to carry over once the season starts guys being more unselfish in the center. And ever since that time, we've had one of the best offenses in the NBA. He's a unique talent. He uh, has a big man. He thinks like a point guard. And he makes everybody around him. In terms of how we want to get where we're trying to go, even if we don't always agree on that. And, you know, many coaches we talked about. Oh, my! A big-time jam by Hassan Martin. He wants to get on the highlight reel as well. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Uh, but... You know, many coaches in the last few years, uh, David Fisdale, Dwayne Casey, you know, just great coaches uh, that have been fired and they've got new jobs. Fizz is in New York, Dwayne Casey is in Detroit, but it's not just that one piece of that kind of three-headed, whoa. I mean, man, that was pretty physical foul. Ojale literally just ran over a Kuhn Purcell. All right, so let's check a look at this jam by Hassan Martin. Wow. Boston foul, number 37, to Chevy Ojale. Another guy. Oh, and a stare down afterwards. Look at the stare down. Fish. <laughs> Thought I couldn't He's jump like, that high, huh? Stan Okoye got a glare after that jam, and he dunked right on him. Which is fine. I think coaches understand that when they accept the job and they decide to get into the profession. But um, so important that everyone continues to to see working together, communicating, and collaborating. Year as a senior at Rhode Island. And here he goes again, but this time he got taken out of the air by Stan Okoye. Let's hope he's okay. Stan Okoye wasn't having another posterization on his watch. Six, Stan Okoye, his fourth personal foul. 
No, good attempt. Good strong finish again by Martin. It's tough to come off the bench. He didn't play a lot of minutes in the first half, you know, but to come off the bench here in the third quarter and be ready to explode, you know, and physically attack the rim. Uh, impressive by Martin. And, you know, again, you have to commend a lot of these young guys on these teams that whether they're getting minutes or not, they're coming into the game and they're physically ready to play. They're mentally attacking the opportunities to go out there and show that they belong here. And it's, it's just really good to see. You know, you don't see guys out here maybe not in great shape. You know, guys physically look strong. They're running fast. You know, they're, they're hitting each other, playing physically. And, you know, it's, it's a good quality. And with, with, with Strick, it was just, it was the scoops and the reverses. And the big would come over to contest and they would have yeah, just to kind of get past it. But it, it had to be a scary moment briefly while he was in the air. I mean, it makes you think of 